Good morning. Okay, I directly like to, uh, to share first what I would like to achieve. So I would like to share a little bit how how we are able to win bigger projects with Asterisk and maybe how you can, if you're a system integrator, how you can strategize and size your organization that you can achieve that. And a little bit what is the Asterisk system integrator market look like at the moment. But for sure I can only talk about the Asian market because we operate out of Malaysia, so, so I would not know exactly how it uh, looks in the, uh, in the US, but I, I would assume it's quite similar. And then, for sure, I would, do sh I would like to share some projects that we have done, where, as said, David mentioned, where we could take away some clients from these big bad boys out there and uh, deploy asterisk solutions. Okay, that's, that's actually how I see the uh, current market space for, for uh, system integrators. We have, we have a, lo a lot of asterisk company. They, they, they operate now in a, in a small space. Eh? They, 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 they deploy asterisk, small appliances, for FXO port, stuff like that. That's for sure a very huge market, but there's just zero service value. So we are open source company, but at the end, everyone has to make money. Okay, so our company exists not just for the fun of it. At the end, we want to make big money and able to enjoy our, uh, our work and our life. So, so we see this, uh, this market is not a very interesting one. It has a very low complexity, little additional business. If you, if you deploy an asterisk system in such a market, they will most probably never come back to you. They don't need additional features. They don't have backend integration. There is very little maintenance and support contracts you can sell. So simply, I would say for an asterisk system integrated, not a really interesting. What I personally, in my opinion, think is even the worst market space, this is out of our uh, asterisk experience, is the SME market. It's also a very big market, especially, uh, as you, as, as, especially in Asia, where 90% of the companies are, S uh, are SME market. They still have a low service value. If I sell an asterisk system for $50,000 or $100,000, I cannot sell for $300,000 or $500,000 services. So in my eyes, it's still very low service value. So very difficult to grow anything out of that. So, so it's, it's, there's just not enough beans there. On top, our experience is this SME, they have very high complexity in the projects. They want everything. They want all the features, the gadgets, the toys, but they don't want to pay for it. So that, I think, makes the SME market a very difficult market. And again, for uh, my company, for our company, makes it uh, not such an attractive market, there's not much we can take out of there. So where we focus on what, what I would like to share and what, would I, what I would like to see in, a in the community, that there are more company focused on the enterprise space, the telco, the ISP, the carriers. It's a small market, but for sure the service value is high. Uh, complexity is also high. There's a lot of additional business to do, and for sure the maintenance contracts are not cheap. We have some contracts, they pay, they pay some telcos, they pay maybe 50,000 US a month for the maintenance and support just for the asterisk system. So, so that will allow us then to grow uh, our company in a, in a larger kind of a setup. So it's for sure on the top where we have the, end, uh, the uh, enterprise space, only there a system integrate, you can grow a business. If, if you don't go there, it's very difficult to grow over a five-man or ten-man company. Hmm. If, I mean, if that is the goal that, that you want a system integrate, then you're in the right space. If you really want to grow bigger, then I think you have to, you have to move up. On other top, what we're seeing now in Asia is, see, Asia is actually quite advanced in terms of infrastructure. So let's say in Malaysia, Every, to, to every house we have a fiber now. If you look in, uh, in uh, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, that's all fiber to the house. So a lot of key phone systems and, SM, uh, key phone and SME systems are actually not replaced by a box, they're just hosted. So when we're talking about hosted asterisk solution, uh, hosted PABXs, that's in Asia a reality. Okay, I'm not sure how it is, but in Asia it's a reality. If you have a five-man company or ten-man company, I, these people would not buy a PABX system, a, a, a switch box or something like that. I think that's one of the challenges also that Digium faces in the Asian market. I think they don't sell 
They don't sell a lot of these switch box boxes there because the infrastructure is a little bit different. So as a system integrated company, if we would focus now in these two areas, I think in the future there's not much business. I'm not sure for you guys, but I think also in, a, in the US or in Europe the same thing will happen. So there's no need anymore quite quick for this PIBXs because if you look in Germany, they're phasing out the PSDN now. Same they're doing in Malaysia. Telco Malaysia has the goal in two years' time, no PSDN anymore. That's all IP. So, so I think that would be quite a tough space to be in with all these boxes and, the, and, the, and, the, and, and the, this kind of products. But if you look for sure in the enterprise space, where we have thousands of extensions or many hundreds, there is for sure a good market to be in. So what we think in the future, a couple of years from now, I think it's quite a bad market to be in there. I mean, you can survive, but you cannot grow. I think a good market to be is here, actually, hmm, where, where, we have more, uh, where we have more dollars. On the other hand, what we see now in Asia, and that's quite scary, I'm not sure how you see it here, but the Cisco and the Wire, they they on the way down. And I don't mean that n down in terms of money. I mean it down, they come from the enterprise space downwards, very strong in the SME space uh, in, uh, in Asia. So, so they're really aggressive. They have very good marketing, branding, a very aggressive pricing. And a Wire system is actually cheaper in Malaysia than uh, a Switchbox box. So, so they're very aggressive pushing into this market. And they have a huge advantage. They have the enterprise space in the background. We don't have that. These companies have 10 years, 20 years, very large PABXs in the background. So they move now into a smaller space. So everyone trusts them. It's for everyone different, correct? So. So, so, so if we look in, uh, in, in Malaysia, now an SME company is, is, a, is between 20 and 500 people. So that's, that's a considered an SME company in Malaysia. I'm, I'm sure it's different here uh, in the uh, US. Eh? They face some challenges, this is Cisco and Avayas, because they're pushing their SME products now into a market where, where they have to deal with the, with the old PABX installers. You know, the guy that come with the drill, put four holes in a wall, put a couple RJ11 cable into the wall. So in this case, they have no clue now on, on how to deploy all this very affordable IP-based Avaya and the Cisco system. But I think they're catching up quite quick. What we observe at the moment also is that a lot of asterisk companies that uh, in the region in Asia, they move away from asterisk. They're really moving away just because now the big guys, they do marketing support. They have sales support. They have, they found events with this company. I'm not sure you guys, if you ever got a ringgit from Didium to do an event or do marketing or do stuff like that, we don't, at least I never got that. That is a very big difference that we should not underestimate. So these people have given companies and system integrators a huge support. I can currently not call someone in Ditchum and say, hey, I, I need a meeting with you guys. You have to convince that this is really the right product. It's very difficult to arrange that. No official channels, no enterprise team. So that's something that would be my wish for this morning that they would have that. Huh? So that, that, that they help us a little bit to go into this enterprise space, actually. So, so where we can see zero activities at the moment. So, so we have a little bit two philosophies going apart here. One is the Switchbox SME space, and one is the enterprise space. So for, for a bigger system integrator, it's a little bit uh, troubling at the moment. We also have some problems in the market. When I look uh, back the last uh, two years in Malaysia, in Malaysia and Singapore, we had around 10 asterisk companies coming up. So, None of them was actually really focused on asterisk. All of these companies were small, and eight of them are already gone. Okay? That's not good, because it creates a bad image. When you today step in companies in, in Asia, they know about asterisk, and they, they tell you, oh, you know, this failed project, that failed project, this one is abandoned. That's not good. That's not helping us in the enterprise space. So that's something I'm a little bit worried about to see. Yeah? So I'm not sure that is in, uh, in the US, but in Asia, it's starting to get a problem. This is resulting in good marketing sales stories for Cisco and Avaya. We are feeding these guys at the moment with bad asterisk projects, and I, I really hate that. 
I hate to go in a, in, a, in a sales presentation and they tell me, hey, you know, I hear that in the Prime Minister's office in Malaysia, the Astris project failed. That's very, that's, it's very difficult to start the sales pitch then eh, on uh, how good Asterisk is. So sometimes for sure it has good opportunities for us because we can try to fix and help the problem. But that's, that's, not what we, that's not what we would like to see. Eh. So we would like to see, my wish is that we have really solid uh, uh, Asterisk uh, implementers that actually know what they're doing and deliver successful projects. As we said at the moment, uh, our bad guys, Cisco and Avaya, they insanely drop prices, really like, really like crazy. Sometimes I feel they want, they, they want to give the client money that they take uh, Cisco or Avaya, uh, so they talk bad about Asterisk, they give free upgrades, and they invest for sure a lot in PR and marketing in Asia at the moment, eh, in, this, uh, in, uh, in this SME space. For me, they look, all in all, they look a little bit desperate hmm? because their strategies are not so clever, I think, in a, in a long run. They're riding on fear at the moment. So we, for sure, we can take that to our advantage. So, so when we, have, we actually have to fight back, and that's, I think it's the right moment. So when we want to go into the big game, so I, I say now, thousand and a couple of thousand extension upwards or a system like for 10,000 concurrent costs and stuff like that for sure we need to have a little bit of a decent size of company it cannot be a four-man show we need to have like in every big business you know we need a clear strategy we need the right people in our asterisk company we cannot just be geeks I wish that I have all geeks, but now we have HR people, we have marketing people, sales director people that do that. Like in any other normal company, like Cisco or Oya, we have to do the same. So we just copy what they're doing, so they're not doing it wrong. So, so we just follow them, and, and they try to grow a, a, a big business uh, out of it. What we did, and that was tough in the beginning, we turned down all the small asterisk projects, because they just took our time away. They generated very little money, and they, they did not give us any good references. So we just, keep, we just kept away from this small project. What we did very extensively, and that's maybe something you want to consider, is that you, that you design, implement, and, 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 and operate your SOPs for asterisk, like the big guy's doing. If a client asks how you implement an asterisk project, don't start mm, a little bit here, a little bit there. Have your document ready, your manuals, the standard procedures, the documentation, the install scripts, and, and, and the training material. That just makes a good impression. Again, like the big guys also do. So, so we have, to, uh, we have uh, just to copy them and actually do the same. Most important is, sorry. Yeah, this is just, see, I mean, they will not, teacher will not like to hear that now, but